backs up. My, whoops. Sorry. Good morning. I want to start by thanking Mayor Lee for allowing me the mayoral prerogative of speaking first. <laughs> there are uh, two stories here today. Uh, the deal itself, which you've read about in the newspapers today, and uh, the process. The deal, uh, the transaction, I believe is a win-win for the city of San Francisco and also for um, California Pacific Medical Center and the Sutter Health System. By the way, my name is Lou Gerardo, and, uh, <laughs> and I'm this gentleman that was uh, allowed to mediate this process. This agreement uh, results in a significantly larger St. Luke's Hospital, 120 beds versus the 80 beds that were planned, and a significantly smaller new Cathedral Hill Hospital, 274 beds versus 555. St. Luke's Hospital will now be an integral part of the CPMC system with about 25% of all the CPMC's beds in the city. The agreement obligates CPMC to continue providing a specified level of charity care to the neediest San Franciscans with no reference to CPMC's financial conditions or projections. In fact, we came up with, I think, a very creative way to solve what was an issue. And I'm happy to say that the creativity initiated on the side of the hospital. Over and above the ongoing health care obligations in the new hospitals, the agreement results in about $90 million cash to the city for community benefits and other th things related to health care, transportation, workforce training, affordable housing, and pedestrian safety. safety. That's an overview of the deal, and you will hear. I'm going to make some acknowledgments, and then you will hear from those that negotiated the contract or the agreement, the term sheet, the development agreement, uh, as to specifics. The process uh, was one that I came into with somewhat or some bit of intrepidation. Um, I have been involved in politics in San Francisco in the past, but not so much lately. And I know much of what I know about our Board of Supervisors from what I read in the newspapers. And I was concerned about what it would be like to work with these young people who, <laughs> who, uh, who are, are responsible for the legislative, legislative function of our government. And I also realized that by San Francisco definition that I was dealing with supervisors that were of three different labels, left, middle and right. And I need to say today that I have never been so impressed in my life by politicians to watch them come together as one and to develop a strategy along with the hospital team for the common good. We We developed, we developed together a process that was transparent. The members of the Board of Supervisors and the mayor's team were able to see all of the numbers, construction numbers, budgets, projections, and were able to question them and to bring in expertise to verify that those numbers were real numbers. So we got educated together we depoliticized together, and then we built trust. I'm not saying it's perfect trust, but we built trust. So I would like to single out David Chu, David Campos, and Mark Farrell for the great job that they did. We owe the mayor's office, in particular in the person of Ken Rich, a great deal of debt. He did a wonderful job. I just don't know who I'm going to talk to at midnight anymore. <laughs> and I also want to thank people from the Department of Public Health uh, and, 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 and others from the mayor's office. But 
Colleen Chava, uh, Greg Wagner, and Mark Primo were instrumental in helping us all get educated and to understand uh, the projections and understand the construction cost, et cetera. I also want to acknowledge the hospital team, uh, Mr. Mike Cohill, who is the CEO of Sutter West, Warren Browner, the CEO of CPMC, George, I want to say Wu, it is it who? Is it Wu? George Wu? George Wu. Thank you, the C CFO of CPMC. And John Gates, uh, an interestingly uh, creative CPA, CFO, uh, who works for the hospital. And of course, the chairman of the board of CPMC, Mr. Bob Tomasello. <laughs> throughout, throughout this process, uh, I've had the luxury of a of a, of a number of people helping and counseling me and encouraging me, but I would like to particularly thank uh, Bishop Mark Andrus, who has been a tremendous supporter of St. Luke's and the community and that which all of us have been looking for. <laughs> and last but not least, I want to thank the San Francisco Coalition. Um, we, as part of our process, had meetings with the coalition in my office, uh, their executive committee that varied from 10 to about 13 in size, <coughs> from meeting to meeting, and also their liaison, Mr. Paul Kumar, who I communicated with almost on a daily basis to uh, keep the community apprised of what we were doing and getting their opinions and understanding their desires and their goals. Um, I think at the end of the day, what I've learned is that San Francisco is still a city that knows how, and a city that wants to make things work, and it's a city that has citizens that care about each other, east, west, north, south. So congratulations to San Francisco, and I now want to introduce our fine mayor, Mayor Ed Lee. Thank you, Lou. Uh, yeah, I, I yelled out wife and family <laughs> to make sure that uh, uh, it was a way in which to acknowledge the tremendous sacrifice that Lou Gerardo has given to the city. You know, I'm excited today. Uh, whenever you get hospital workers standing next to construction workers, you know something big is going to happen. And it has uh, in the same level of excitement that I've seen on the rebuilding of General Hospital, on the building of uh, UC San Francisco Medical Center, on Chinese Hospital. Every time we touch our healthcare system, we have something that promises a better life for people and an offer of great medical services. And I know Barbara standing next to me is excited about this announcement as well. CPMC and Sutter Health and uh, St. Luke's are incredible institutions for San Francisco. And that's why there had been a commitment that we would do our best as a whole city uh, to attempt to make uh, this project happen because of the laws of the state of California that require that seismic upgrade of our health institutions because of the tremendous pressure on our healthcare system to deliver for the next generation of San Franciscans in Bay Area and for the incredible economic pressures that are faced with this hospital and so many other hospitals. And the job is never done. This is an announcement about where we are today, but we have to get this thing built. We have to make sure it's furnished like we are working on our S of General to make sure everything happens at a time when there is tremendous economic pressure on all these institutions coming from national uh, decisions that uh, don't necessarily complement uh, the economic recovery that we're experiencing in the Bay Area. And so I want to put this into perspective for one great uh, uh, acknowledgement that I want to make is that this was not easy to do. Lou's assignment here, and I don't know why he ever took this up, uh, because uh, uh, he, it, it really uh, accounted for hundreds of hours of his time to keep everybody at the table. But it is an acknowledgment I want to make uh, personally and on behalf of the city to thank uh, Board President David Chu, to thank uh, Supervisor Campbells and Supervisor Farrell each and every one of them, I would have to say, this project would not have gotten done without their direct involvement. Uh, yes, 
I started some of the things, and I was excited uh, a year ago when we thought we had an agreement. But realizing that the movement of healthcare and the need to have this hospital be uh, reconfirmed for its future was incredibly important. And we didn't have that agreement a year and a half ago, and we had to put together a process to make it happen. And these three supervisors came together and they essentially made it happen with the support of uh, Ken Rich and others and public health and so many others. But Lou's penetration, his workability, uh, I have to say, when they got close and I heard the news they gotten close, I had to go down and get that, uh, uh, that clam chowder and the sourdough bread <laughs> just to reassure myself that uh, it was happening in our city. And it takes strong personalities, it takes uh, an incredible amount of effort to depoliticize these issues when uh, we had every reason to have justified us walking all the way. And by the way, when you hear the real stories, and probably it'll come out, somebody will leak something. Uh, there was more than one time when everybody felt justified in walking away, and I'm glad that they found reasons to come back because these institutions are incredibly important to our city, to the families, to the health care needs, of the whole Bay Area, uh, but it would not have been done without the members of the Board of Supervisors stepping up as they have done uh, and gaining the insights that Lou was, uh, was creating for all of us. Uh, so I want to not delve my role into all the details and let the supervisors speak to what uh, their passion was in keeping uh, themselves focused and together on it, but to say to you that it's an incredible time for the city uh, these are major, major healthcare institutions that we have. This will lead to hundreds of jobs for the city, permanent long-term jobs, but ultimately it will be another great brick in the whole healthcare industry that we have to have going forward. And with all of the benefits that were negotiated, it's also, I think, a great signal to the way we do things in San Francisco, and we have to share in this effort to do so, and I am so happy to have uh, not only shared this, but to have acknowledged the importance of our board having direct conversations engaged in this effort. So thank you very much, supervisors. Thank you, Lou. Uh, thank you, Barbara and Ken and everybody else to make this happen. Uh, let's go forward with this uh, effort and make sure that uh, uh, the, the path is clear and Again, I want to thank Sutter, CPMC, for their leadership as well because they are making another incredible investment in San Francisco. And this investment is now honored with this agreement, and it's sensitive. It's, it's one that everybody still has trepidations about what will occur to them as we go forward. But we're making the great leap of faith going forward as a whole city family, and I'm so glad that we have this opportunity to reassure everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Mary Lee. Um, I'm going to introduce um, uh, five people that will say a few words, and then to also let you know that uh, the members of the board and the mayor uh, will be available uh, to you for questions, uh, not from the podium, but as they mix with uh, everybody that's here today. So I, I first would like to introduce uh, Supervisor Mark Farrell, um, and uh, to say that uh, Mark has been instrumental uh, in every way uh, toward bringing us to this point in our um, efforts. And uh, I would like to say that I think that Mark is a great peacemaker um, and has served us, the city and his district, well in this process. So I introduce to you Mark's Supervisor Mark Farrell. Thank you, Lou. Um, and thank you all for being here today. Today truly is a great day for the city of San Francisco. Um, we are proud to announce an agreement with CPMC that will bring two brand new hospitals to our city. Two hospitals that incorporate the needs and concerns of our neighborhoods and also ensures that we have access to world-class health care for generations to come here in San Francisco. As Mayor Lee mentioned, this is going to create 
thousands of new jobs, not only construction jobs, but also permanent jobs here in San Francisco. San Francisco is the envy of a number of cities, not only through our state, but also throughout our country, and now we can add two brand new hospitals to the list of reasons. Supervisors Compost and Chu and I will talk about a few of the details um, of, the, of, the, uh, of the deal that we reached with CPMC. But first, I want to acknowledge a number of people and echo some comments of thank yous. Uh, first of all, to my colleagues, uh, to Supervisor Campos, Board President David Chu. Uh, much was Lou mentioned and Mayor Lee mentioned. Uh, it was an incredible honor to work together. I think at times we disagree on the Board of Supervisors, but it took a real effort, the three of us, uh, working with CPMC. And I think it speaks not only about what happened during this process, but I think about the future of the Board of Supervisors, of us working together as colleagues. Uh, we've certainly experienced that the last few years, but I think this speaks volumes that all of us have come together uh, to work together in this manner. So I really want to thank both of my colleagues for their tremendous effort. To uh, the mayor and his team, thank you for all of your effort. Um, I particularly want to single out Ken Rich. Ken, I have no idea why you're behind the rope back there. Um, come on up here, Ken. If anyone deserves a round of applause, Ken does as well. Ken, uh, Ken represented the mayor's office in all of our meetings. I think we talked earlier today, we met approximately 40 different times, multiple hour meetings since the fall. All of us agreed on the Board of Supervisors, both David's and I, that w none of us have spent more time on any single project as elected officials than we have on CPMC. And I think that's why we're so proud to stand here in front of you today. I'd like to thank CPMC. Uh, in particular, Dr. Browner um, and Mike Cohill, who we've gotten to know so well <laughs> over the past few months. Um, but to transform what was um, a potential deal last summer to where we are today took a tremendous effort, good faith on all sides, and CPMC deserves a ton of credit, and we just look forward to working in the future with, with all of you. Um, and I think lastly, but I would say most importantly, uh, to Lou Gerardo, uh, who is here in front of you. Lou, uh, as mentioned, was the mediator of these negotiations, but was so much more. Lou is a San Francisco treasure not only the most famous baker in our city at this point in time, um, but someone, I will tell you straight up, if Lou was not involved in this process, we would not be here today. It could have gone many different ways. A number of times the deal was very close to falling apart, but it was Lou Gerardo himself that kept this deal intact, and we are here today because of you, Lou. Thank you so much for all of your effort. So I'll briefly touch on a few of the, the elements of this deal um, that uh, to me are incredibly significant. First of all, Cathedral Hill uh, and the new campus for CPMC. Originally was planned as a 555 bed hospital last year. Today we're announcing a deal to build a 274 bed hospital at Cathedral Hill, approximately half of the size with the ability to build an additional 30 beds. While smaller, this does reflect the concerns of the local neighborhoods, traffic congestion concerns, some of the community coalition concerns as well relating to St. Luke's, which Supervisor Compos will touch on. But most importantly, it still creates a brand new hospital at Cathedral Hill. And this Cathedral Hill Hospital will be CPMC's flagship facility here in San Francisco, and I'm very excited to be working with them in the future. For our neighborhoods, and I think what's so unique about CPMC's campus is throughout our city, and not only provides great access to healthcare throughout our neighborhoods, but their facilities are located, as is St. Luke's where we are today, in our neighborhoods. And so making sure that we heard the concerns of our different neighborhood groups, of coalitions, and make sure those were met were very important. So very pleased that we have worked out arrangements um, so that the neighborhoods surrounding the campuses on California the Pacific Campus, the new Cathedral Hill Campus, and Davis and St. Luke's are all being met. Um, and that was an incredible part of what we do here in San Francisco to listen to our neighborhood groups and concerns, and it's what we present today. 
And lastly, in terms of the future of our healthcare and uh, the financial aspects of it, uh, now as chair of our budget and finance committee, it's something that I'm particularly focused on. We spend approximately $800 million a year on healthcare here as a city and county of San Francisco. So making sure that we secure the financial future of our city as it relates to healthcare is incredibly important. And certainly that issue that we're going to be tackling soon, our $4.4 billion unfunded future healthcare liability. These are real numbers and this matters to the future of our city and all the services that we provide. And very proud that we have an agreement that protects uh, our financial future as a city. Uh, and that also we have all learned so much in this process and that we're going to continue as a city to keep our eye on the ball uh, and to make sure uh, that we have a secure financial future as a city. And lastly, just a few other thank yous uh, to the people that are around uh, the podium here for our uh, different city departments, Barbara Garcia, um, to all of our uh, trade members, to Mike Terrio and all the trade members, thank you for being here, um, to the Community Coalition, uh, to Vince Courtney from the Alliance. Uh, this has really been a group effort and a group supporting us here today. I couldn't be prouder to be part of it, and I want to thank, again, all those involved. And at that point, uh, we'll turn it back to Lou Gerardo. The next person that I'd like to introduce is Supervisor David Campos. I would like to say that uh, David, they talked about 40 hours of meetings, but they didn't talk about the hours and hours of telephone calls and, and constituent meetings and that sort of thing. And I dare say that individually these fellows put in about 200 hours each over this process. And, and uh, I will tell you that David has been an incredible champion incredible champion uh, for this campus in particular, for St. Luke's and, and the needs of this, this, this area. And um, I didn't know David before I came to this process and I walk away uh, from this process with great admiration and the sense that I've uh, developed a new friend. So Mr. David Campos, Supervisor David. Thank you, Lou. Uh, uh, I do want to acknowledge a number of folks, and I know that uh, many of them have been acknowledged, but I do want to, uh, I think it's important to really give credit where credit is due and to Lou Gerardo. You know, one of the, the, the honors that you have as an elected official is you get to work with some pretty impressive people. You get to know a lot of people throughout the city, throughout the, this, the district that you represent. And I have yet to meet anyone who is more impressive in terms of your commitment, your intelligence. Uh, and your true sense of dedication to community, Lou. It, it, uh, I think that Mark Farrell said it well. You are a treasure here in San Francisco. And now that this is done, I know that the White House is looking for someone to work on the Middle <laughs> East. So, uh, you know, uh, I think that you would be a, a good candidate for, for that. But it really has been an honor. I want to thank Mayor Lee for his gracious remarks and to thank uh, his uh, staff, and especially Ken Rich, uh, uh, who has put a lot of time and effort, and of course the, the different departments, including Department of Public Health and others that came in to support us. I really cannot be prouder of the work that we collectively as members of the Board of Supervisors did here. And I especially want to acknowledge uh, President David Chu and Supervisor Mark Farrell. It's, it's the, the three amigos, probably not the most natural group of, uh, of folks working on this. Maybe it's a new voting block at the Board of Supervisors, I don't know. Um, but what was so incredible was that, that in the process of representing specific concerns and interests, that we made a commitment to make sure that we work together. And I do believe that Supervisor Farrell is right, that this is not only a testament to uh, what happened here, but it's actually a roadmap for going forward, how we collectively as a city and as a Board of Supervisors can work on even the most difficult issues and resolve them. So I look forward to, to that. Uh, I want to thank, by the way, a couple of people from my staff, uh, Hillary Ronan, who's here with her beautiful new baby, Mael, and as well as Stephanie Ashley for all the hours that they put into staffing me on, on, on these issues. Um, but I especially want to acknowledge the community coalition. This is a victory for them at the end of the day. There are so many organizations, and you'll see a list of them, that they're the ones who have been advocating for making sure that this project be built, but that it be built right. And I want to thank them for making that happen. We are here today because of your efforts 
and we as a board, we as a city, uh, are, I think, uh, very grateful and should be grateful for the great contributions that you have made. So I want to talk a little bit about, so thank you. Let's give the coalition a big round of applause. And, and I especially want to acknowledge the liaison from that coalition, Paul Kumar. I don't see Paul in the crowd, but, but uh, I think it's fair to say that, that, that Paul was an integral part of, of making this happen. So uh, thank you very much, Paul, for your great work. Let me talk about St. Luke's. You know, it's amazing how life, you, in, in life you kind of come full circle. Um, I first became introduced to St. Luke's when I was finishing school. And I had graduated and I did not have health insurance. And I was pretty sick and I didn't know what to do. And so I learned about St. Luke's. That's the place where people who are find themselves in my predicament go to get health care. And I did go to St. Luke's and I was welcomed uh, with open arms. A few years later, uh, my mom was visiting me from Los Angeles and she got really ill and we had to take her to the ER. And we came to St. Luke's and they saved her life. So it is very much uh, a very personal issue for me to make sure that whatever happens in this deal, that we ensure the long-term viability of St. Luke's. And the test for me has always been we want St. Luke's to be a world-class hospital. This deal ensures that we get that. We, we, have, we have 120 beds. We have 120 beds, which is a 50% increase from the original proposal. But more importantly, St. Luke's plays a more important role as part of the larger CPMC, CPMC system. CPMC, uh, by making it a larger hospital, is making a real commitment that will ensure that this hospital continues to serve this community for years to come. And it's not just the size of the hospital, but the specific requirements that, that I'm happy to, to talk to you afterwards that actually require not only that it be a full service hospital and that follows the guidelines that the law provides in terms of defining that, but also that it provides specialties and there's a, a center of excellence that's specifically outlined to ensure that, that St. Luke's is, is a successful hospital. And something that is very important and something that, that we fought for, and, and I appreciate the fact that CPMC was willing to work with us on that, not just the hospital itself, but also making sure that we have the option of building a medical office building to ensure the success of this hospital. So I am very proud of this result. And as a supervisor for this district, we are here at St. Luke's. I think that many, many people will look back and be very grateful that we collectively got to this result. I also want to talk about health care. And one of the things that's a really critical part of this agreement is uh, there is a health innovation fund of $9 million. Uh, working with the Department of Public Health, CPMC will be making an investment in the healthcare needs of the city as a whole, and included in that will be addressing the specific needs of the communities and neighborhoods that surround St. Luke's with a focus on mental health, which we know is a big issue and a big priority for us. So I'm very proud, very proud of that piece. <coughs> and then, you know, something that is also very crucial is the issue of housing. And the affordability of housing is one of the biggest you know, issues that we face as a city because it determines who gets to live in San Francisco. And I am proud that this deal not only maintains the level of affordable housing but that was created in the original agreement, but it actually increases it from 29 million to 36.5 million for affordable housing. That's something that we should be very proud of. So. I, I look forward to, to discussing the specifics with you, but again, I want to thank everyone for making this uh, happen. I look forward now to engaging in a discussion with my colleagues uh, to explain to them why we believe that this is a good deal, uh, to make sure that they get the information they need to, to verify the numbers and the terms of this agreement. Uh, and again, I'm very proud to be a part of this group today. I'll turn it over to Lou Gerardo. Thank you, David. The next um, uh, 
uh, speaker is Supervisor David Chu. Uh, David um, is an amazing strategist, a very good leader, uh, a man who um, does a lot by example, including riding a bicycle in the rain, which uh, amazed me at, when he came to so many meetings wet, <laughs> but, but willing to sit and go through whatever we had to go through. Um, I have come to admire him and um, respect him. And it's my honor to introduce uh, the President of the Board of Supervisors, David Chute. What a great day. This is a tremendous day, a great day for the future health of San Francisco. And let me start first by admitting, now that we're here, uh, that when we started this process, I have to admit, I was not hugely optimistic that we were going to get here. And there have been a lot of thanks that have been given, but I, of course, and I need to echo some thanks and appreciations for everyone who sat around the negotiating operating table to resuscitate this critical project. Success has a lot of parents, and let me first start uh, by thanking my colleagues, supervisors, Campos and Farrell, what David referred to as the three amigos. We are an unlikely trio. Usually Campos, Farrell, and Chu are not three names that are in the same sentence often. Um, but as was said, uh, we have spent more time on this project than anything else that we have worked on since we have all been at the board. Uh, and I cannot be prouder of the role of the Board of Supervisors on this. I, of course, want to thank the many city staffers uh, that brought us to where we are today. Uh, and I wish we had an opportunity. We should probably at some point list out the hundreds of folks that I know were part of this. But in particular, uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor, for working with us. And in particular, uh, Ken Rich, you really get one of the major Unsung Hero Awards of this entire effort. I want to take a moment also to thank our counterparts across the table from CPMC. And let me say, I think this press conference is very different from the press conference that I called for way back in July. Is that right, Dr. Browner? <laughs> um, I want to thank you for your commitment to San Francisco that you have demonstrated over the years and that you have demonstrated in this agreement. And I know we look forward to moving forward with the approvals in the coming weeks and months. And we look forward to actually opening up a brand new St. Luke's and a brand new Cathedral Hill Hospital. And of course, um, much has been said about Lou Gerardo, and I'm just gonna say this to the press, for those of you guys who are looking for uh, a feature story to do around someone, this is a man who doesn't want you to do a feature story, but I'm gonna suggest that you do it. David has already suggested that Lou go to the Middle East to fix their problems. I'm gonna start with some issues close to home. Lou, we need some negotiations around homelessness, fixing schools, and fixing Muni. I'm wondering if you're ready for that task. <laughs> and of course, I also want to echo the tremendous thanks to the community. There were dozens of organizations and literally thousands of people that interacted with all of us at City Hall to make sure that we address the health care issues, the housing issues, the labor issues, uh, the uh, transit issues, the neighborhood issues, we could go on and on, but this deal wouldn't have been put together but for all of your impact. Let me take a few moments to flesh out some of the other deal points that we have come to that have not already been touched upon. First of all, with regards to healthcare, in addition to the basic structure of a St. Luke's that is going to be 50% larger than what was proposed, and a Cathedral Hill that will be 50% smaller than was originally proposed, and the significant community benefits. In addition to the Healthcare Innovation Fund uh, and issues around how we deal with cost limitations, we do have significant provisions about the future of charity care and a commitment of CPMC to that charity care. In the original development agreement uh, that we were discussing many months ago, there was a dollar commitment to that charity care. In this agreement, we are inking uh, a comparable commitment of the number of charity care patients uh, per year that will be taken care of approximately 30,000 a year, uh, which is a far better way to measure the impact of charity care, particularly with so-called Obamacare coming down the pike. In addition to that, CPMC is also committed to adding new Medi-Cal managed care patient lives to the tune of 5,400 new lives that they will take care of, including 1,500 that will come through a primary care provider in the Tenderloin neighborhood. Another topic that has been raised often uh, has been around local hiring and workforce training. 
as was in the initial development agreement, and I know our friends from the building trades will appreciate this, CPMC will continue to hire at least 30% of all construction jobs from San Francisco. But in addition to that, we have improved the provisions for future permanent entry-level jobs. Initially, there were 40 jobs a year for the next five years that we're going to be committed to. Using our local hiring reference as a guide, uh, we have agreed to 40% of new entry-level permanent jobs will come from San Francisco. And these will come from residents and be targeting residents uh, that live in real working class neighborhoods, the Southeast neighborhoods, the Western Edition, the Tenderloin, Mission, Soma, Excelsior, Chinatown, et cetera. There was also in the original development agreement a $2 million pot for workforce training. We have doubled that in this agreement to $4 million. Let me talk for a quick moment about transportation. I know this is of immediate concern to the constituents in the four supervisorial districts that intersect at what will be the future Cathedral Hill site. There were a lot of questions about potential congestion around that site, about potential 28,000 new car trips to that site. Let me say a couple of things about transportation. Uh, first of all, obviously, with the hospital being half the size, we expect many fewer trips being taken, so that will mean less congestion to that area. The parking garage is going to be about 200 parking spots smaller, uh, with a garage that will not be available after 7 p.m. unless someone is coming to the hospital. There will be about $14 million worth of benefits being provided to improve transit. The new Van Ness and Geary BRT, uh, other pedestrian safety and transit improvements that we need in the neighborhood. In addition to that, I want to thank CPMC to agreeing to robust transportation demand management programs to help manage traffic congestion, annual monitoring and transportation services, and more policies to incent employees to use clipper cards. This is a comprehensive proposal. Uh, and this afternoon at the Board of Supervisors, we will be introducing, I believe it's about a 10-page single-space term sheet that lays all of this out. But in closing, I just want to thank each and every one of you who have had this vision on where healthcare could go in San Francisco. Look forward to working with all of you to make sure this becomes a reality. Thank you. Thank you, David. Um, the next speaker that I would like to introduce is uh, Warren Browner, who is the CEO of CPMC, and uh, a man who's been at it longer than any of us that, that have been at this table for the last few months, but he's been there for years. I believe that uh, he has suffered deal fatigue, and he's, he's weary at times, but he's kept himself together and has represented CPMC well with a vision and a thought process that was for the common good for the patients of CPMC today and tomorrow. So I would like to congratulate Warren for all the good work that he did in assisting all of us to bring this to a conclusion and then present you Warren Browner. <clears throat> Thanks, well, as you've heard, I'm Warren Browner. I'm the CEO at CPMC. And let me just begin by saying, welcome to CPMC. We're delighted you could all make it. Then um, let me just tell you, Lou, that what you thought was fatigue was actually walking pneumonia, <laughs> so, um, which I'm slowly getting better from, but you can probably still hear it. My, my grandmother would have called it a chest cold, um, but modern technology disclosed it was substantially more serious than that. And I want to thank the docs from our medical staffs who came and our our colleagues from the trades who've been supporting this project from the very beginning. Um, two members of the board of Sutter West Bay Hospitals, Bishop Mark Andrus and our board chair, Bob Tomasello, and our board has been incredibly supportive uh, of everything we've done. So thank you. An ibid to Kenrich, who who, without whom this deal would absolutely not have happened. In fact, he's the one who actually has the deal on his computer. And for those of you who know um, how Word documents work, he's done 99% of the work on it. So thank you to Ken. 
And of course, um, Lou Gerardo, whose deep roots in and respect and love for the city of San Francisco really made this all happen. But I want to make, uh, really my comments are, are, are mostly addressed to the group of us who sat around the table. <laughs> and, and, uh, and it's a three word sentence. We showed Sisyphus. <laughs> there were many times when it looked like we were pushing an incredibly heavy rock up an even steeper hill and that we would never get to the summit. <laughs> and obviously, we are here. We're delighted to be here. And we are very much looking forward to actually the final steps of going through the board and putting shovels in the ground, we hope, sometime in 2013. So again, thank you all for coming. Thank you for supporting CPMC. And thank you for understanding our vision to build two new hospitals in this wonderful city of San Francisco. So thank you. Thank you, Warren. I'd like to introduce uh, Barbara Garcia, who is the director of the Department of Public Health, uh, who has been counseling us through this process and answering questions and uh, providing us with staff and expertise to better understand what we were learning. So. Uh, Without any further ado, Barbara Garcia. Uh, good morning. This is a very exciting time for the Department of Public Health. I want to give some thank yous. Uh, of course, to the mayor, uh, Mayor Lee, who helped select Ken Rich to bring the city team together in our first phases. But I also wanted to thank our health commission. In 2008, they laid out some policy direction, and then again in 2010, they really became the foundation of some of the agreements today. And in fact, my second week on the job, um, Ken came to us to start working on this issue. And so for the last two years, our staff, including Colleen Chala from our uh, policy director, uh, Mark Primo, who's our uh, capital um, consultant, along with our CFO, has really provided a lot of um, information to both Ken and the rest of the team. It does take a large uh, community effort to do this. Um, I worked closely with the Community Coalition as well. I want to acknowledge Bob Prentice, I can see through the crowd here, along with Roma Guy, who was one of our original uh, um, commission members, and, and also Paul Kumar. Um, health has to be driven by community needs, and they led that charge for us, and I really appreciate their work. We are having an incredible agreement today, two seismically safe hospitals. Um, and that is really important. And um, we're in the midst of rebuilding San Francisco General Hospital. I know, I know how important that is to have safe, seismically safe hospitals. This also has, and you've heard from many, some of the um, important uh, community benefits from this process. Um, but I would um, like to especially acknowledge Warren Bronner from CPMC, Judy Lee, uh, Michael Cohill, who worked with us um, and we became, I think, very good friends. And, and we're also working on a lot of projects beyond even this because of that uh, initial process. Again, um, the supervisors coming in and Lou to finalize this process made it all happen. So I want to thank everyone. And we should be very proud. There are 30,000 individuals when healthcare reform happens that are going to be qualified for new health insurance and they will be coming to new hospitals and seismically safe hospitals throughout the city so I really appreciate everyone's work thank you so much on behalf of all well that's it ladies and gentlemen thank you very very much uh, thank you mayor Ed Lee for this opportunity thank you David Chu Campos and Farrell uh, I enjoyed it and I'm glad we're done <laughs> thank you.